Hey, I'm Chase, and this is All Things Random. Today, we're talking about this, the Steinhardt Ocean 44 GMT. Now before we hop in the video, hit that subscribe button, leave a comment of the content you guys would like to see on this channel. Now let's talk about Steinhardt. Steinhardt itself as a company has a lot of controversy in the actual company itself, in the watch community, because Steinhardt itself is known to replicating or making really good homages of Rolex style watches to include the Rolex Mariner and the Rolex GMT. Now, some people would say Steinhardt is the closest thing you can get to a Swiss watch homage Rolex than Rolex itself. I'm not really sure if I believe that. I think Steinhardt has its ups, its downs, its highs, and its lows. However, this is a Swiss watch, and the reason I chose the Steinhardt Ocean 44 GMT is because it does offer that GMT and it does have a little bit of the Rolex sort of design, which is all dive watches. However, it is different. So let's just flip the camera around and dive right into the review. The Steinhardt Ocean 44 GMT Professional Dive Watch. This is what we are looking at today. Now, why did I pick this watch and why is it on this beautiful brown distressed leather strap? Well, Really, the reason I picked this watch is I was searching on eBay and I found it for a really great deal. And I got it checked out and everything is great on it. Everything is functioning as it should and everything seems to be working very, very well. I picked it up for about half the price that it goes for on Steinhardt's actual website. So half the price and I get a Swiss GMT with... 300 meters of water resistance. Now that's one of the things that Steinhardt does that somebody like Rolex does not do. Now Rolex's GMT Master has 100 meters of water resistance, which is fine. 100 meters of water resistance is plenty of water resistance for a GMT watch. Now remember, a GMT watch originally was for pilots. However, it's nice that this GMT offers the same water resistance as the Rolex Submariner, which is basically the dive watch that everything else is referenced off of. So let's just talk about this watch a little bit. We'll go into the specs and we'll look at the details of the watch and is it as good as people say it is. So let's start off with the case. The case is 3L stainless steel, which is the industry standard. You can see that it is a high polished finish on the side, brushed on the top, and you can see that there are scratches here because this is a used watch. The dimensions of this watch are 44 millimeters in diameter, so it is slightly larger, and that could be off-putting to most people because generally 40 millimeters is the sweet spot. However, 44, I'll show you, isn't too bad. Now, it does have a height of 13.5, so this is actually relatively thin for a GMT complication like this. It does have a screw-down case back, again, offering that 300 meters of water resistance. You can see right there, 100 feet, 300 meters, Steinhardt Ocean 1. I really like the seahorse and the guy with the trident in the background. I think it actually looks pretty cool. It says it has a sapphire crystal, Swiss automatic. Now inside the watch, the automatic is the Swiss at a 2893-2. Now this right here is a 21 joule movement that offers both hacking, hand winding, and that GMT. Now it does have a screw down crown, so let's just unscrew that real quick. And let's pop it out to the first position. And in the first position, you have two things you can do. You can either twist it back, and as you twist it back, you can see that the date changes. And then when you twist it forward, you can see that the GMT hand does, does jump as it should. Very nice, just hops into where into place where it needs to go now pull it again and you can see that the second hand stops so it is hacking like i said it is hand winding and you turn the minute hand here you can see everything on this watch is extremely smooth in fact when i hand wound it for the first time i was extremely surprised 
just how smooth the wind was. And I've had a lot of ETA movement watches that are very loud in their winding, but this is extremely silent. This is more reminiscent of actual Rolex itself, which has that anti-wind wind that you actually can't feel at all. So you can see right here, I reach the 12 o'clock and it starts to pop over and boom, just before the 12, it does have a quick change date. Not bad at all. Push the crown in. There is the hand winding right there, if you can hear it. Again, extremely quiet. Go ahead and screw this back down. And let's talk about the bezel. One of the things that I'm not a big fan of on this bezel is that it only has a unidirectional bezel. Most GMTs have a bi-directional bezel that allows it to tick back and forth. However, if this is dive rated as a professional dive watch that you see right here on the chapter ring, engraved extremely nicely, professional dive watch, then you'd expect it to have only a unidirectional bezel. So it does have the 24 hour bezel ring on the outside. This is aluminum, so this is gonna scratch, but it's gonna give it a nice aged look. In fact, I really like the old style Rolexes before the ceramic bezels because it has a really nice age to it, a really nice wear as you wear it over time. I just hate that clasp. I can't get past that pressed clasp. I just like the glide lock clasp so much better. I just could never think of getting a five digit Rolex Submariner unless I could do something about that clasp. So it is a unidirectional bezel. It is 120 click and they are hard clicks. You can feel it click in the place on each one. See, it has no back play at all. Click over once, locks into place, and there's nothing, no slop at all. I'm very happy with the way this feels. Everything lines up perfectly as it should. This is the Pepsi variant version with the red on the bottom and blue on the top, so it does have that classic design. Now, one of the things that is a little off-putting about this watch is the fact that the dial to, I guess, case ratio is a little small. Now the dial is small compared to, if you look at the chapter ring, plus the bezel, plus like the lugs here. It just seems like there's a lot of meat to this watch with a little bit of dial that could be a little bit off-putting. However, I'm here to tell you both the pros and cons of this watch. See Ocean 44 there at the top of the chapter ring and everything is very, very neat. The words on this watch are very clean when you do a zoom in on the Ocean GMT. On the Steidhardt, you can see that everything is crisp and clear. Even that date window there at the three o'clock is centered perfectly in that date window. They really do pay a lot of attention in making these watches. Now, one of the things I did not mention is the lug width. The lug width is 20 two millimeters, so it is slightly larger than most dive watches that come in at 20 millimeters. However, I did put this really nice distressed leather strap on it, and this distressed leather strap is from C2 Watch Straps on eBay. In no way am I affiliated with them at all. I bought this on my own. I just think it's a great looking strap. It does offer quick release straps. And again, when it comes to something like a GMT or even a Rolex Submariner, when you put a different strap on it, it really does change the character of the watch. Now this came with a light brown strap. It did not come with the original bracelet. Little upset about that, but again, half the price that it normally is brand new. Even with, I've actually worn this to work several times. I've worn it for the last week and it does have some scratches. However, I'm very happy with the condition this thing came in. You can see that the indices are placed on the dial. No printing there, and the loom fills the indices very well. However, unlike a lot of the other loom that I deal with, when you charge this, it, it's not bright initially. In fact, in the light, you can barely see it at all. However, it lasts throughout the night very, very well. Now, this is Super Luminova BGW9, so this is pretty great loom. I just was a little bit depressed when it came to the initial glow. You know, a lot of those, those watches to include Seiko, Rolex itself, and even some of the cheaper micro brands, the loom is extremely bright and brilliant right off the bat. And then, you know, it quickly fades into a, into a dull 
loom that you know lasts for about 15 or 20 minutes. This just stays sort of low key and dull, but it lasts for quite a bit of time. Let me show you what I mean. Now under the 60 watt studio lights, it's been sitting here charging. Let's turn them off in the pitch black and let's see what it looks like. Okay, you can see right there, it's like I explained, it's not bright and brilliant right off the bat, but it does maintain this loom for quite a long time. You can see everything is perfect to include that GMT hand right along the six o'clock. You can see everything very bright, brilliant. Everything is uniformed across the board. Okay, now we got that out of the way. Let's toss it on the wrist. So you get an understanding of what this 44 millimeter watch looks like on a seven and a quarter inch wrist. Okay, here is the 44 millimeter, 13.5 millimeter high Steinhardt Ocean GMT on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. You can see it wears a little bit big, but not too big. At work, my uniform is long sleeve, so it does go down over my watch, and it actually fits pretty dang well. Now, you can see this leather strap, I'm still breaking in, so it's a little loose, but I'm sure I'll hit that next hole probably in the next two weeks as I stretch this thing out and wear it nearly every single day. I'll tell you, this is an extremely comfortable watch. It's very legible, and it does have that classic design. There's almost nothing negative to say other than the fact that the dial seems small, the size is 44 millimeters. And I could tell you that if this was 41 or 42, I think it'd make a world of difference. But other than that, this thing is solid and I can't wait to see how it does in an actual dive situation. Now, if you like videos and videos like this, hit that subscribe button down below, leave a comment of the content you guys would like to see on this channel. I have so many videos coming up in the future, so make sure you click that notification bell so you can be notified when I drop my next video. Until next time.